All right, guys, so uh, I thought I'd give you all an update on how the uh, Cummins Clean Tuning Course is coming along. So what we decided to do uh, is a little bit more work on uh, the stock tune and kind of do some more pulls and whatnot. And I'm going to show you um, some weirdness that I found that actually turns out to be pretty darn good. So give me just a minute. Let's get this out of your way. Perfect. All right, so we're going to start by looking at uh, two dyno charts. So these are the dyno charts from the dyno jet that we've been working on. And um, these are the stock pulls from the RAM with the stock tune. I don't know what you're thinking, like, man, how is this possible? Look at the variation here, you know, and I like to kind of focus because it's a diesel um, on the torque side of things. Right. So 609 and 666. How can we say, you know, this is the stock tune if there's such a big variation? And so what's interesting is I kind of stumbled upon this, but I was doing a lot of testing and I noticed uh, in the scanner here um, that the stock boost, which I have uh, in this configuration here, we do write an awesome config with your course, uh, but this is uh, an early version of it. And so we provide um, the boost here so you don't have to try and watch it on the gauge. But what I noticed was that compared to driving on the street, it seemed a little bit lazy as it spooled up on the dyno during the pull. So I like to pick a solid, uh, consistent set of um, data parameters here. So I always look here at 2,500 RPM being a diesel, and it really only pulls to about 3,000 anyway. Um, so it gives me data that is solid. It's already spooled up and it's only making about 25 pounds of boost. The line does go up here eventually uh, to 28, but I felt like it was a little lazy. Um, but honestly, that's weird because it actually correlates with the higher dyno chart here. So that is the uh, baseline, 319 and 666. Um, but if you'll notice, the green lines are shifted to the right of the red lines. And so reason being is, and this is the whole kind of point of this, is that those first dyno pulls and tests we were doing were with the dyno unloaded, no load, just inertia. Um, and the dyno jet we have is a 24 inch, I believe a 24 inch roller. Uh, it does have load bearing uh, capabilities. So we decided to um, start bumping up the load and see what best replicated the street. So when you actually drive this vehicle, how it would behave. And you'll notice immediately there's a huge difference. It's up at 30 pounds of boost at the same RPM. And so when I did that pull, I was actually quite surprised, but it was less. And so the actual uh, horsepower and torque were less, even though it had more boost, which sounds really sorts of, you know, all sorts of backwards and weird but that has more to do with the rest of the tune. And what this really shows us is that with the correct or as close as we can get to the correct load on the truck, um, it spools up quicker, it makes its power quicker and then falls off quicker, which does represent how it drives on the street much better. So the dyno charts being different are just attributed to the fact that it spools up, makes its power and it's done. Um, but since you're here, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek on how far we've gotten uh, making some more uh, runs. Uh, with some actual tuning. So here was our uh, our latest tune at the time I had done this work. And so uh, we achieved 388 for horsepower, pretty darn big improvement, and um, 865 foot-pounds of torque. So really nice improvements here uh, compared to our baseline. So if I clean up the dyno chart and just really show you the, the tune uh, that we finished up with there, as well as the correct baseline. Uh, here we go, let's set this up and there we go. Uh, the actual numbers are even bigger. So the whole point of this is, um, and we tell, us, we tell this to people all the time, um, consistency is key. So if you're going to do your dyno tuning on, you know, a turbo diesel, then you need to pick a set load percentage if you're using like the dyno jet here um, and use that same load percentage every time you upload a tune and test it. If you're using a different brand of dyno, you might be able to set it up um, for like a, a drive simulation, like Mustang Dyno uses. Um, so you don't have to do those things, but either way, um, great tools. My whole point of this video is to show you guys some awesome updates and also drive home the point of look for consistency when you're doing your tuning on your dyno, which is a great tool.